Good morning and welcome to my latest video on Umarex 68 caliber. Uh, this is the 68 caliber HDS. Uh, the one you're looking at is 16 joule. I just removed that little stopper inside and took it from a much lower joule rating to 16 joule. It's got a, quite a bit of punch now. I've been promising for the last two or three videos to do something on uh, ballistic gelatin, uh, how to make it and what it looks like when you use the Umarex on it. And I finally got around to it. So, with no further ado, ballistic gelatin. Now, if you've tried to make some of this with just plain old uh, Lykes-Nox gelatin, which is very effective, it's what I used. It's a nice low cost gelatin powder. Um, you may have found that it was a lot darker. Well, I saw a couple videos where they were doing things like using uh, much higher concentrations of uh, hydrogen peroxide, mixing it into it. And I got to thinking, well, if you're gonna go and use half a gallon of water and then put in a 29 to 34 percent hydrogen peroxide, basically food grade hydrogen peroxide, in effect what you're dealing with there is about three, four percent hydrogen peroxide and that is nice and cheap. Uh, right here is uh, Hydrox three percent hydrogen peroxide. Four gallons shipped to my door was thirty dollars. Can't beat the price. Uh, the next thing you have to do after that is figure out well what is my ballistic gelatin going to look like? Now, if you want to be prim and proper about it, you probably want to go 6 inch by 6 inch by 16 inch and say, I've got the same stuff the FBI uses. Well, this is an Umarex. <laughs> We're not firing a pistol or a rifle into it. And I think for this first try, this is going to work fine. So, with that said, I've got to have a mold. Mine was nice and simple. Little pound cake mold. Now, the first thing you're going to do is figure out what the volume is of this. I did that. I put water in and found out that it could hold uh, 63 ounces of water. So then you do the math. It's 8 to 1. You get uh, 1 ounce of uh, gelatin to 8 ounces of water. Well, 63 ounces, that was 56 ounces of hydrogen peroxide and 7 ounces of gelatin. Okay. There's plenty of good videos online on how to make this. What I'm going to do is talk about the pitfalls, uh, the things you really got to look out for. <clears throat> First off, with the mold, um, I did a real simple thing for being able to get that gelatin out of the mold. I simply put plastic over it, put a second one in, wrapped it around the bottom and taped it in place. And that way, uh, when I wanted to remove it from the mold, popped it right out, let it sit there for a minute, slowly peeled the plastic off, and it worked great. It was a nice, simple way to uh, get that gelatin out of the mold. And it's one of the things I'd recommend. Then there's the actual doing it. I had the uh, smaller glass bowl for the seven ounces of gelatin, the larger glass bowl for 56 ounces of refrigerated hydrogen peroxide so that it wouldn't clump, and simply mixed it. When you get done with that, you gotta put it into a double boiler. Well, what is a double boiler and why do you need one? Um, you go back 50, 100 years, double boiler made a lot of sense. You're using a uh, heater or you're an oven that's got a gas into a cast iron pan or something that's not spreading the heat very well, you need something to spread the heat so you're not going to scorch whatever's inside, be it chocolate or ballistic gelatin. So <clears throat> flash forward 50, 100 years, what you've got are electric ranges and pans that have copper lining inside that really uh, spread the heat well. But just the same, I follow the directions for a double boiler. In my case, it was simply a pan with a couple knives inside. Filled about halfway up with water, got the sucker on the heat up to nine, started heating it up really good. And then once I had the gelatin mixed, uh, basically to the consistency of applesauce, I put it in the water and waited it for it to heat up and waited and waited and waited. It took quite a while. Uh, as it was heating up, I got a lot of foam on top. So one of the things I did was I took a simple strainer like this, would run it across, pull it out, and get a lot of that foam off. Uh, I, I think it probably helped the end product some. When it finally heated up with lots of stirring, got the thing up to 140 degrees, I was able to pour it into my mold, then overnight it hardened. <clears throat> and what I got was a big old chunk of gelatin. So that worked well. Now the good news is, I'm gonna go and shoot this a bunch and have some fun with it and tear it up a little bit. Uh, then I'm gonna reuse it. Uh, this stuff's gonna be good for two, three weeks. I actually put some antifungal in, so I'm hoping to get even a little bit longer than most people do out of it. At the heart, it's gelatin. Not quite like jello pudding, but it's, it's basically gelatin. 
So uh, over time, it will begin to mold and mildew and that sort of thing. I believe the antifungal I put in, which is actually for coolant for machinery, uh, is going to make it last longer. I'll be able to tell you about that in, well, a month or two if it's still around. So after I shoot this thing up today, uh, it's going right back into the double boiler. It's going to get melted at 140 degrees, turned right back into a thick soup, poured right back into the mold, and I'll be reusing it again. So without further ado, let's shoot some stuff. I'm going to move this down just a little bit and put this on the end. And basically, that's about two inches thick. Um, again, this, this isn't a high-powered gun. I want to see if there's penetration and how much penetration. And if it's over two inches, I'll probably shoot it from the side. Um, let's adjust this up a little bit. And let's see what we're going to be shooting today. <clears throat> well, there's the blow dart. I have a little dart, doubt this is going to go through. Basically, this would be like a tummy shot. No ribs, no bones. Is it going to go through flesh? So I'm looking for things that would get into flesh. I believe this is going to pass right through. I'm probably going to shoot it again from the end just to see just how far this thing can go. So I've got a couple of those. I've got my little arrow one I built a couple videos ago. I think this is going to get in there a little ways. We'll see. I've got just a standard little ball bearing round. I don't think this is going to come apart. I believe this is going to hit. Maybe puncture a hair. I don't know. It may not even go in at all. And I've got this. This little round right here, actually made up a minute or two ago, is a Hornady VMAX 53 grain uh, bullet. Basically something you'd have like in a 223. It's got a little plastic cone at the end. It's a decent little lightweight 22 caliber bullet at 53 grain. It's pretty small. Uh, what I won't be doing today is any of my really cool stuff I try to come up with every week. I recently found a bunch of Vietnam era flechettes and I've got the little glass jar with three flechettes in it. I'll probably be shooting that into wood at the next video or a couple videos up so you'll be able to see these flechettes break the glass and stick into something like wood or metal, but not today. So, oh, one step I, I missed. You may or may not have one of these around the house. If you don't, you can pick one up really, really cheap. It's just, you know, a little temperature thing saying what the temperature is. This is very handy because on the gelatin, you do not want to get above about 140 degrees. So you sit there and you shine this at it after stirring it on the, the stove repeatedly. And 5, 10, 15 minutes in, you're going to see it get up in the 138, 140 range. And at that point, you know it's time to pour it into the mold. Okay, well, I put a new air cartridge in here. So I want to see just how well this thing can do. So the first thing we do is we have it ready. And... Let's start with a blow dart. And as I said, I think this is going to go through and be stuck into the uh, cardboard. And I'm at about two feet away. Oh yeah. So what we have is the plastic piece always comes off. We have the needle, which is through the cardboard, hit the cardboard, and actually created an odd little trail in there, if you can see it, where it bent the needle because it stopped passing through flesh and hit something hard. And the needle itself, which I was able to pull out, has a little bitty bend at the end. So we're definitely gonna shoot one of those lengthwise and see what happens. And actually, let's do that right now. Out of curiosity, just how much flesh could one of these needles pass through? This will be a little more interesting because I want to make sure I stay inside the gelatin. Uh, okay, well, it went off at an angle, but what it did do is there's the trail that it comes in. It hit, started going off at an angle, and basically went through. So probably going to try one of those again in a bit, maybe on the next video. I would like to see just how deep that can get. Okay. The next one, let's try this little arrow that I made a couple videos ago and see how much that buries into it. Oh, that did the trick. So, basically what kept it from going any further, oh, and it's stuck in the cardboard, interesting. Okay, well, that kind of tore up watching that. For what it's worth, you can see the trail inside. It tore it pretty well. It did go through. 
I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna try to keep this thing from moving. I'm gonna shoot this one more time and see if it actually passes through. If that cardboard had not been in the way, would it have passed right through? Nope, it's still stopped. As soon as it hits that plastic piece, it stops penetrating. But basically, that arrow tip is an inch past the ballistic gelatin. This means if this were to fire it into an animal or human without hitting bone, it would probably go no less than three inches in. That is pretty nasty. Okay. The next thing I want to try is, I'm not expecting a lot from this, but this is just a little bitty one with still bearing in front. Let's hit a spot we haven't really hit yet. Well, that is a surprise. So seven millimeter still ball bearing. The entire round is fully one inch inside. So uh, that is a surprise. I was not expecting that. Uh, that went in quite some distance. Okay, the next one, let's see if we can make this a little bit easier here. The next one is gonna be the bullet. And I don't know what to expect from this, but we'll see. What I do know is the plastic's gonna stay outside, the bullet's gonna travel. Um, let's see if I can line it up halfway decent. Okay, that did pretty much exactly what I thought. The plastic would stop, it still would have smacked it a little bit. And there is the bullet fully four inches inside, maybe even approaching five inches inside. There's the track of the bullet going in. That is quite a bit. So again, fired at human or animal, you've got fur or flesh that has to get through, or skin that has to get through, clothing that has to get through. So yes, it wouldn't quite go in as far unless they weren't wearing clothes or fur, but uh, four inches inside is where that bullet's sitting at. That is not bad at all. Okay, now here's the fun part. This does not mean this ballistic gelatin is done. The next thing you would do is simply break it into pieces, get your projectiles out. And what I have left are a couple big old clumps of ballistic gelatin. That's gonna go right back into my double boiler. That's gonna get reduced back into liquid. It's gonna be put right back into the mold again, and it will be ballistic gelatin for the next test. You know what? There's one last thing I wanna try. You probably saw this on my last video if you happen to watch it. I took my uh, bug assault and uh, decided I wanted to do more things. So I set it up with a, took out the stock barrel, put in a rifled stainless steel barrel so I could fire 0.177 uh, pellets out of it. So now my bug assault will fire the fine salt. I can make cartridges with uh, rock salt but I can also pop pellets in and it's a perfect fit. The pellets go in, sit snugly inside, ready to fire. So let's line up their little arrows and let's see just how far in a pellet will go. Okay, don't know if you're able to see that or not. But what we have back here in the cardboard are where the pellets hit. So it actually passed completely through four inches of ballistic gelatin. I'm gonna pop those two back together and see if eight inches stops it. Wow. Okay, it'll be kind of tough to see. All those teeny tiny little lines right there going through are pellets and Right there is a pellet. I can see it better from that end. Right there is a pellet, and right there is a pellet. So it actually made it through four inches and about five inches in. And then you've got one, two, two pellets stuck in here. So that's pretty darn good. That went a lot further than I thought it would for a pellet coming out of a bug assault pistol. Anyway, until next time, have fun. and hope you enjoy the video. Take care. Bye-bye.